Are you scared that the AI is going to replace you? Ever since the advent of AI, it's been a bad scene for the tech market and the tech world. Ever since 2022, there's been a lot of tech layoffs, a lot of people have lost their jobs and a lot of people are having difficulty finding jobs. Recession has been at its all-time peak and it's overall a bad scene for the tech domain. So in a state like this, it's natural to get worried or get stressed out about whether you are going to get replaced by AI or not. So in this video, I'm going to give you a few skills that if you learn and if you add these to your portfolio or to your resume, then it'll add more value to you as a software engineer and it'll make you more irreplaceable in the foreseeable future. And I'm not asking you to change your domain. If you're working in a particular domain, you can continue to do so, but you can learn these skills because these are some valuable and irreplaceable skills that will make you more valuable as a programmer, as a software engineer, and as a developer. So now let's start the video. Now, the first skill that I have for you is data science and data analysis. Now, I'm not asking you to become a data analyst or not, I'm not asking you to become a data scientist, but as you know, data is the future and in the world of tech, data is everything. That's why a lot of these companies are spending millions and millions of dollars in just collecting data. So you need to have a good knowledge of how data collection works. You need to have a good knowledge of how data manipulation works. And it's imperative that whenever you come across a task involving data, you don't get totally confused. So what I will suggest is you try a little bit of hands in data analysis, data science. What I will suggest is there are two applications that you should know how to use. So one is Microsoft Power BI, one is Tableau. Both of these applications are pretty easy to learn. It's not like it's something complex, but if you learn them, you'll get a good idea of data visualization and how the world of data works. So like I said, if there's ever an opportunity of working in data or in the future, if data becomes a more opportunistic field, then you won't have much problems and you'll have the skills that are already required for the domain. Now, the next field that I have for you is cybersecurity. Now, if you go too deep into cybersecurity, it's a complete domain of its own that involves a lot of in-depth knowledge. But you need to have a little bit knowledge of the fundamentals of cybersecurity. So if you're working on an application, if you're working on any application, even a website, even an app, then obviously you'll have some user base of the product. You'll be working with some users and you need to make sure that the data of the user and the data of your application is safe. So security is a pretty important thing to deal with while working as a software engineer. So I'm not saying that you go too deep into cybersecurity, but you should at least have a good knowledge of some basic things like how encryption works, what are some good encryption algorithms, what are the disadvantages of using certain encryption algorithms, what are some strong encryption algorithms, how network security works, and how you can basically improve upon the security of your code base or your user base. So doing this or having a good knowledge of this will definitely improve your value as a software developer. So I'll list a few resources in the description from which you can learn the basics of cybersecurity. So go in the description and feel free to check those links out. All of them will be free. Now, the next skill that I have for you is leadership and communication and management skill. Now, once upon a time when I was in 10th, 11th, 12th class, I was preparing for armies interview so i wanted to go into the defense sector and eventually I, I felt that my career line was not aligned with that but during my phase of preparation i had taken a leadership and management course and that course to this date helps me in everything i do when i'm whenever i'm working in my company when i have to ask my teammates to do something when i have to talk to my manager about something or whether i have to manage a team of something it always helps me so it is very good to have some good leadership skills and communication skills of how you can talk in a corporate setting because obviously you'll in the company you'll be managing a lot of colleagues you'll be talking with your manager you might even have a team to deal with so if you have some good leadership skills then it makes your job much much more easier and if you want to climb the corporate hierarchy then having management skills having people management skills having communication skills can surely pave your way of going to the top. So it's important that you know how to influence people, how you can ask them to do something without coming from a place of authority, without sounding rude, without sounding arrogant, and being polite in a corporate or in a professional setting. So these are skills that you should absolutely have, and this communication skill will help you in the interviews, it will help you in the company, it will help you in your job search and general in your day-to-day -day life as well. Now, the next skill that I have for you is pretty interesting and you can even learn it as a hobby. And this is basically productivity automation. 
So in your day to day life, whether if you're working in a company or whether you're doing a project, whatever you're doing, you, you'll be noticing that you're doing something that is repetitive, either filling up a form or writing the same code snippet again and again, something you might be doing, which can be automated, which is basically repetitive and does not require any computational thinking or any complex thinking. So such things can be automated with the help of coding. So if you do something like that, if you automate a task that you're regularly doing, suppose you're doing it for one hour a day and during the year it amounts to hundreds of hours a day and suppose 10 more engineers are doing that. Then if you automate that task, then it can save your company thousands and thousands of hours and even hundreds of thousands of dollars. And obviously, if you do something like that, then it will make you more valuable to the company. It will improve your rep as a developer and it will make you much, much, much more valuable as a software engineer. So you can try to look into automation, how automation works. You can try to do it as a hobby also. There's a very great course on Udemy, which deals with automation, productivity automation. So again, I'll link that in the description. You can feel free to check that out as well. The next skill that I have for you and arguably one of the most important skills in today's day and age in the development sector is cloud computing. So it's imperative that you have a good knowledge of cloud computing and about some cloud computing platforms like AWS, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud. Using cloud computation, you can ensure a high availability of your software or your application. You can optimize cost and resources and you can build scalable solutions for the problems that you're facing in your application. A lot of courses don't deal with the deployment of the application. They teach you how to develop, they teach you how to write code, but hardly they deal with the deployment or the cloud deployment. So if you learn this, then you can set yourself apart from the myriad of different software developers that are out there. And there's a lot of free resources that you can use to learn more about cloud, about this infrastructure, about deployment. I'll again link a few resources in the description that you can learn, you can use to add this skill to your portfolio and become a better software engineer. The last skill that I have for you is something that you might have been hearing about for quite some time now. And this is basically prompt engineering. So you might have seen a lot of ads which are promoting their courses on prompt engineering. A lot of instructors are teaching prompt engineering and they are hyping it up like it's something very complex. So don't take it like that. It's not too complex. It is just a simple thing. It's a simple skill that you can learn by investing your time and efforts into it. So what is prompt engineering? It is basically the interaction that you have between the AI. So if you look at the latest AI models, if you look at the latest version of ChatGPT, Claude, and all these things, then you can see that they can help you in your programming. They can help you in your development, but they will not help you directly. You have to communicate with them. You have to be able to explain the problem that you're facing because they are also having difficulty understanding. There's a huge communication gap between the AI and the problem. So a prompt engineer or person who's having this skill can bridge that gap by knowing how to communicate to get the exact solution to the problem that they're facing. So if you're a software engineer, if you're a developer, no matter what you're working on, if you ever come across a problem and if you know how to interact with AI, if you know how prompt engineering works, even on a basic level, then you'll be able to get a quick and like efficient response to the problem that you're having. So I highly suggest that you learn a little bit about AI interaction, about prompt engineering. There's a lot of good videos on YouTube as well. You can just search prompt engineering on YouTube. You'll find a lot of good videos. And now you can see that AI is getting integrated in a lot of things. In Microsoft Office AI is getting integrated, in Canva AI is getting integrated, in a lot of online tools AI is getting integrated. So definitely sooner or later, whatever application you're working on will have AI integrated into it. And during that time, if you are someone who has AI skills, then you will have more opportunities to work on and improve in your career. So these are the seven skills that I have for you that you can learn right now. You can start, you can get started right now into learning all of these and improve your portfolio, improve your overall value in the tech market and even get a high paying job and be in demand in the tech market. So that's pretty much it. If you have any doubts, or if you want to ask me anything, then feel free to leave a comment. I love to hear from you guys. So that's all. Thank you.